Hello and welcome to another edition of the Avid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and some time ago I was asked by Evan Crichton if it was possible to create an effect in Media Composer that gives the impression of footage being shot with a surveillance camera, including some distortion as transitions between cuts. And of course it can be done because pretty much everything can be done if you put your mind to it. And uh, generally, if you if you have an idea of an effect you want to create, just uh, imagine what what this would look like in in your um, in your head, and then try to break it down into several effects that you can accomplish doing media composer. And if you just think what surveillance footage would look like, it's gonna it's gonna look like crap and grainy and damaged and and stuff like that. So that's that's what we're going to create. And here's just a sequence with uh, four shots that are totally random and you know they don't have any anything to do with each other. They're just from different surveillance cameras in different rooms. Of course, generally, if you wanted a surveillance camera, you would also position the camera in a certain way. But um, I just had these shots, so that's what we'll have to do with. The first effect that we're going to apply is uh, the good old 3D warp which is like the multi-tool of Media Composer. So just go to Tools, Effect Palette, Blend, and drag and drop the 3D Warp on the first segment. Then go to the Effect Editor. And we're gonna do a couple of things. First of all, we're gonna degrade the, the image quality here by doing a slight blur. This is in the Defocus category. And we're gonna use Foreground only. And we'll slightly blur it by like 10. What we're also going to do is skew the image a bit. Now this usually wouldn't happen in a security camera, of course, but it, it still makes it look a little more broken. And this is the look that we're going after. So we'll skew it a bit. And of course, we'll have to scale up because otherwise we'll have these uh, edges here. So let's just scale up a bit. And I think that's basically all we need to do with our 3D warp. The next thing we're going to do is put grain into the image. So we'll open uh, the effect palette again. And there are different uh, ways of applying grain. There is a grain in the BCC effects, film grain. But I usually use the one from the illusion effects. Now, that generally these illusion effects are of not so high quality, or at least most of them don't, don't look really nice. But the, the film grain is okay and it renders a lot, lot quicker than uh, the Boris ones. So again, drag and drop it, by, but don't forget to hold the Option or Alt key to put it on top of the 3D warp. So again, we'll go into Effect Editor and increase uh, the level of the grain and the size as well. We'll make it look really, really grainy. Something like this. And the last thing we're going to do is apply a color correction. Because uh, generally the surveillance footage you think of is, uh, you know, monochrome. So let's make this monochrome as well. Go into the color correction and go into the curves mode. And uh, now something that I usually feel is a limitation <laughs> of the color correction is our advantage. Because now we can turn the master saturation down, so it's black and white. What we also can do is give it a slight S-curve to make it more contrasty. No, that's a pretty strong S-curve. Don't want to lose all the grain. And the good thing is that the curves are applied after the master saturation because the master saturation is actually here in the HSL tab and the processing is from left to right. So uh, if we add green, even though we've turned the saturation all the way down, 
it you know still applies the green if you use the curves so I want to go for a kind of green look you could also go for a blue look if you liked so I'll crank up the green channel and turn down the blue channel a bit so I'll give it a nice greenish tint Now, of course, what we need to do is apply the same corrections and effects to all the other tracks. So we're going to do that. And to do that, again, open Effect Editor and just drag and drop them to a bin. And now you can apply them to the other segments. So now all of our clips have this grainy green look. But we also wanted to have a transition, right? And that transition should somehow look like uh, changing the channel, but it's not quite working. So like the, the image breaking up. And there's a pretty cool effect uh, in the Boris effects that we can use, and uh, it's being applied pretty easily. So again, open the effect palette. And I'll navigate to the BCC OpenGL effects, and there's one called Damage TV. And what we're going to do is we'll use it as a transition. So just move it over the cut and let go. And <laughs> you can immediately see its effect and it looks, it looks pretty cool right out of the box. And we'll make the transition eight frames long. And as you can see, the effect is composed out of a lot of single effects like ghosting and noise and lines. And there are also a lot of presets that you can choose from. So if you don't like the default one, you can also go for lots of noise or a noisy roll or vertical roll distorted. And that looks <laughs> pretty nice. But as you can see, it's all the first image, even when we're on the segment of the second shot. So to quickly remedy that, we'll add some edits at the beginning and at the end of the transition on video track two. Again, go into the effect editor in video track one and pull our damage TV effect onto layer 2, remove it from layer 1. And now the background actually changes as well. So again, what we're going to do is save this effect and add it to the other transitions. Now, of course, we'll have to render these effects because they're not real time. Let's check it out. Let's let's look at our result. That doesn't look too bad. But the last thing I'd like to do is add a sound effect. I'd like some noise when the switching occurs. And I don't have a noise handy, but it's, it's pretty easy to create uh, a noise um, yourself in Media Composer, so let's do that. As you can see, at the first transition, I have added some audio. It doesn't really matter what audio this is, this is actually some... I don't know, I don't even know what it is. Some, some random audio, but it doesn't really matter. All that matters is that there is some audio, so that you can apply an audio suite effect to it. So let's go to Tools, Audio Suite. There's the audio suite, A2 is selected. And let's go to the signal generator. Open the effect settings. And now pretty much all you have to do is choose the white noise. Preview it. <laughs> it sounds great. <laughs> Just the way white noise is supposed to sound. Render the whole thing and uh, then just copy it to uh, to the other transitions. And now let's look at it. Uh, 
and it instantly looks much much better with a sound uh, as a support and you know pretty easily we have quickly designed a pretty effective CD CCTV footage template that again you can use over and over again so how's that after all the audio stuff? <laughs> um, but I snuck some audio suite in there, did you notice? <laughs> but uh, now we're back uh, with, with some stuff that you can actually see. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching this episode of the Avid Screencast. If you like, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast at avidscreencast.com and watch old episodes and... Uh, comment and uh, uh, click on the Amazon link and make me rich or make me not as poor <laughs> if you have any comments or suggestions like show topics just drop me a line at mail at avidscreencast.com or comment on the website or contact me on twitter twitter.com slash avidscreencast or on facebook facebook.com slash avidscreencast if you'd like to know what kinds of things I do in my day job check out editguy.de where I kind of promote myself. <laughs> Again, thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>